after this? We'll see what happens. See, here's, here's the deal. He's never called me to talk to me about the immigration issue. Now I provided him a letter that provides tangible, concrete solutions. Our lead story of the day is regarding President Joe Biden finally visiting the border wall. It's just taken the man two years, folks, but we've been talking about it for that long as well. Going back to even COVID days, if you recall, we talked about stories where they were jamming 400, 450 people into pods at the southern border that were only supposed to hold like 100, 150 people. They literally had to ask the CDC to up the quota from 50% to 100% capacity because they didn't have enough space for all these people. And you're going back like two years ago. But if you recall, Jen Psaki of the time said, this is just a challenge. We're going to figure it out. It's Joe Biden's number one issue. He's losing sleep over it. And then when Karine Jean-Pierre stepped up to the podium as the new White House press secretary, that's been echoed ever since that it's number one issue. He's put an immigration reform on the first day. Congress didn't pass it, this or that. She does nothing but lie, folks, since day one of her doing her job. And the same thing with Circle Back Girl, Jen Psaki, when she did her job. So this White House has done nothing but lie with what's going on at the southern border. And they continue to lie with what's going on at the southern border by cleaning up the mess before Joe Biden ever got there. We got it all for you today, folks. We got clips galore. We're going to take good care of you. But as always, take care of us here on the Ball Brad Show by hitting that like and subscribe button, making sure you're leaving us a nice, short, sweet comment down below. The YouTube algorithm absolutely loves you engaging with the channel. And just take a moment to make sure that YouTube did not go in your profile and change your bell notification icon. Make sure and double check, folks. It actually says all notifications. They are known to do some shady stuff around here. Your help and support would be greatly appreciated. Well, before Joe Biden actually went to the border, this was about a day or two before, um, Kareem Jean-Pierre blatantly lies to the American people. Now, we talk about her lying all the time, you guys. This is one of the worst times I've ever seen her lie since she's been press secretary. I I'm just going to allow her to do the talking, or should I say the lying? Let's go ahead and roll it. First of all, it is a tight priority. I mean, the president put forth a comprehensive immigration reform on day one. So him doing that, that first day of office, the first day that he walked into the administration and sat behind the resolute de desk, clearly states that this is a priority for him and will continue to, to be so. Uh, and look, uh, we will continue to call on Congress to act. Uh, that will not stop. And look, I, I also want to just put this in a broader context here. The president inherited a mess because of what the last administration did. They inherited, a, we inherited a mess. And uh, you know, Republicans in Congress made it worse by blocking comprehensive immigration reform. And so what you're seeing from this president is he's acting. He's acting to protect, uh, to continue to protect the border, secure the border, and also deal with irregular migration. That is what he's going to continue to do that. So the enforcement measures we announced yesterday so as you can imagine, she continues to bamble and, and, and just go on, just like her boss does, not making any coherent thoughts, just lying to the American public left and right. It, it, it's so astonishing. And so that was about a Friday or Saturday. He visits the border on Sunday. He goes to the border. And while they're in the air, Karine Jean-Pierre continues to spin this narrative and lie to not just the press, but the American people during a gaggle on Air Force One. Just listen to this audio recording from Fox News here. Well, Tammy, I want to ask you also about these numbers, but I want to take a listen to something that the White House press secretary said on the way to El Paso aboard Air Force One. Take a listen to this. The number of people attempting to cross the border unlawfully in El Paso is now down by over 70 percent, uh, and that has been since mid-December. Since the president launched the Venezuela parole process, uh, the average daily number of Venezuelans nationals encounter at the border in El Paso alone is now a quarter of what it was prior to the launch. So again, it, it, the, the president's border uh, uh, enforcement measures are working. Wow. <laughs> Tammy, yeah. the president's border enforcement measures yeah. are working. They're all laughing, as as are we here. It, it's so laughable, and the spinning of the numbers, the manipulation of talking about Venezuelans compared to there's a lot of other places that are coming through the southern border there, but we're going to hyper-focus on one. Oh, his policies are working. You guys, you really think his policies are working? Do you really? Does anybody, for the love of God, that at least follows our channel here, really believe that? And what's even more astonishing is you have Greg Abbott here conducting an interview and kind of talking about Joe Biden's visit and all these things. And he mentions, mentions how Joe Biden actually never has called him. 
In two years, Joe Biden has never called this man who's been handling this crisis along with Doug Ducey of Arizona for the last two years or at least. And it's astonishing because you just heard Karine Jean-Pierre of, oh, it's his number one issue since the day one. He's done immigration reform. You had Jen Psaki, as I've mentioned, said, oh, well, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. We're going to get it all figured out. The president knows about it. He knows what's going on. He's in communication, all these things. Turns out the guy's never even called the man that's dealing with the shenanigans down at the southern border that was created by Joe Biden. It's unbelievable. Just listen, listen to Greg Abbott here of Texas. He needs to step up and, and take swift action, uh, including uh, reimbursing the state of Texas for the money that we spent, but providing more resources for the federal government to do its job. Also, this is for nothing but for show unless he begins to enforce the... We'll continue in one moment. It is literally just for show. Joe Biden was being chauffeured around the border. There's like no immigrants in sight, which is astonishing for a border that has over 250,000 crossings a month. You're looking at six to 10,000 a day. And it's astonishing. There's, there's not one in sight. They clean up the streets of El Paso in 24 hours, literally deporting people, getting them off the streets have never been cleaner down there in like the last two years. So Joe Biden has shown some smuggling stuff and how they hide narcotics. That's all he was shown. Nothing actually went on down there other than Greg Abbott handing him a piece of paper that will get him hopefully to solve this issue. But what a freaking gong show going on. It's like as if you're going to go around North Korea and they're only going to show you the sites that are the best looking. They're not going to actually show you what's under the hood, what's really taking place in North Korea. Basically, the same thing happened here. Joe Biden doesn't have a damn clue. But let's listen to Greg Abbott here. Continue with the shenanigans by the Biden administration. Immigration laws already that exist in the United States of America that are contained in the letter that are provided to the president today. Did How did the president respond the president to, you? to you? He said he wanted to work with us on it. So he was pretty him, cordial. Yeah, he was cordial. Do you expect to meet with him personally? It's not hard being cordial with somebody that's had, that has dementia. The dude doesn't even know where he's at. He probably thinks he's on vacation right now. We'll get to the point of him wanting to work with Republicans because it's actually false. They actually stopped Republicans from meeting with Joe Biden at that place. It's <laughs> wait till we get. I mean, the lying, you guys. I know I say this every week, but really, this whole thing, the lying is so out there in the open. It is head spinning. After this, we'll see what happens. See, here's here's the deal. He's never called me to talk to me about the immigration issue. Now I provided him a letter that provides tangible, concrete solutions that will stop illegal immigration. And I expect him to call to me, and that's what Secretary Mayorkas also said. Urge him in the letter uh, to see the real chaos. What everybody here may already know, and that is that there were thousands of migrants sleeping on the streets in El Paso that have been cleaned up in the past few days. How can And I ask him to go see the areas where we have these mass migration crossings and go visit uh, with the people who own property and live on the border whose lives have been totally disrupted. And as you can imagine, we don't really have evidence if Joe Biden did or didn't do that. I doubt that he would go do that. Uh, I mean, Secret Service down there, not betting everybody, not being able to do it. I mean, there's that whole thing. But you guys, it is astonishing. In two years, from an administration that's been saying since day one, every time there's a press briefing, every time somebody talks about this whole thing, is it's always it's a it's a main topic. It's his number one issue other than the economy. He's really working on it. He's never even had a phone call with the guy. Are you kidding me? And it's amazing how Joe Biden's like, oh yeah, we're willing to work with you. Well, Texas Republican snubbed by Biden during border visit says White House explanation is insulting. A Texas border congressman said the White House's explanation for why he couldn't attend. President Biden's first ever trip to the southern border is insulting and shows the administration is not willing to work with the GOP. They snubbed the guy that's dealing with these shenanigans. He has constituents that he needs to respond to that he's supposed to be a mouthpiece for. And Joe Biden wouldn't even meet with him and get him to get to wherever he's going. But at the same time, he's going to say, well, we're, we're working with everybody. Yeah, yeah, we're going to work with you, but you're not making phone calls. You're not actually talking to anybody. Freaking liar. Well, Texas Republican Tony Gonzalez of El Paso of El Paso, where Joe Biden was at, by the way where there's this massive bleep storm taking place, was snubbed by the White House on Biden's visit to the district, which covers a large swath of the southern border. A White House spokesperson told Fox News Digital that the snub of Gonzalez was due to space constraints. Space constraints. You're in the middle of a freaking desert. Oh, oh, no room here. Sorry, buddy. Can't make it. Really? You couldn't meet outside? You couldn't meet wherever the hell? I mean, <laughs> you guys, just going to lie to people right out in the open. Quote, as it's often the case, the president trips we received multiple requests from lawmakers to join the president on his trip, and we're not able to accommodate all requests from the Republicans and Democrats alike due to space constraints. <laughs> well, they're going to blame it on space. <laughs> You're going to blame it on space. 
<laughs> Thousands of people have space to make it across illegally, but you don't even have space for the freaking congressmen and women to sit there and meet with the president of the United States that are dealing with this issue. And you're going to blame it on space. Unbelievable. Well, our legislative affairs team has been and will continue to remain in close touch with these lawmakers. The same people that said that they've been handling this since day one has never actually contacted any of these people. <laughs> yeah, we all believe you. The Texas Republicans told Fox News Digital that the White House's space constraints assertion for his snub is insulting and the White House is refusing his attendance shows the administration is not willing to work with Republicans to address the border crisis. You have Doug Ducey handing them personally the letter. What's going to solve and fix it, at least in his mind? You think Joe Biden's really going to do it? I don't think so. I don't think so. This idiot hasn't figured it out in two years. You think he's going to figure it out now? All the all the people that's around this president in two years from the book that's that's literally comes out on the 17th is talking about how the lack of solutions is coming out of the White House. Well, now he has solutions. We'll actually see if he figures it out because somebody else figured it out for him. But, you know, we all know Joe Biden is dementia is going to kick in. He's not going to have a clue. He's not even going to remember that he visited the border. You guys, he makes up stories about his own family that he thinks happened. You think he's going to remember this? I don't think so. Quote, I find it insulting that President Biden blames space constraints for ignoring my request to accompany him on a visit to El Paso County, which I represent in Congress. You think you would have the guy that represents the county that you're visiting in to actually be there with you. But no, no. Too much to ask for from Joe Biden, folks. You got to be kidding me. For two years, administration has pointed fingers at Republicans for not wanting to act in bipartisan manner on border pol policy, which we've said time and time again, which is absolutely astonishing. The fact that they're blaming it on Republicans, as you just heard from Karine Jean-Pierre herself when they literally had all three branches of government for two years and got nothing done. In contrast, by not inviting Republicans on this trip, specifically the Republican member who represents El Paso, it shows they are not willing to work across the aisle to fix the crisis on the southern border. And then what they're going to do is like, as you heard, they're going to blame it on, uh, you know, space and time constraints and all these other shenanigans. Well, it's a bunch of hocus pocus, folks, but let me know what you think about this in the comments below. It was a gong show there at the southern border. He made the trip down there. He walked around in some dirt, looked around, looked up and down, and then he was done with it. So we'll see if anything actually comes about of it. But like I said, I want to know what you think about that one in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.